As a faction grows, so too does the need for an organized system of control and governance. This is no different for the Wasteland's favorite faction of post-apocalyptic tech hoarders. The Brotherhood of Steel, led by a single patriarch, is organized into two main branches, all held together by a strict chain of command, known as the Chain That Binds. As the faction grew and spread across the desolate ruins of America, their chain of command evolved to meet the specific needs of the individual chapters, with some evolving beyond what their founder could have ever imagined. As such, the geolocation and goals of each chapter determine how many ranks are implemented amongst the faction. Beginning on the west coast of America, in a pre-war governmental security bunker known as Lost Hills, the faction as we come to know them was born. Relatively small in number after having taken massive casualties during their exodus from Mariposa military base, the Brotherhood of Steel would implement the bedrock of their ranking structure, dividing the faction into militant and scientific branches. In the 200 years since their founding, the ranks that form these branches have evolved into what we know them as today, with different chapters expanding upon these roles to meet the challenges of the wasteland. The very first rank to be found amongst Brotherhood society and positioned at the bottom of the totem pole are squires. This rank is reserved for children who are born into the Brotherhood, or those who have been claimed by them at a very young age. During their time as a squire, they are heavily conditioned by the Brotherhood's quasi-religious doctrine, with some kids already claiming to not fear death. Squires are not permitted to engage in military operations in any capacity and are typically relegated to the role of menial laborer. During this time, they are trained and educated by the Brotherhood Knights and Scribes to fulfill their eventual role in the chapter, whether it's that of a scribe, knight, paladin, or elder. For those who are not born into the Brotherhood, the path to earning a rank in the faction looks quite different. If deemed adequate for service, the Brotherhood will initiate a Wastelander into the Order, granting them a rank reflective of their origin, being that of Initiate. Just barely above that of a squire, an initiate's primary duty is to learn the beliefs and culture of the faction, accepting them as their own, as well as to train in the art of war. Certain chapters will distinguish their initiates further based on what their specific role will be within the organization, such as that of the Capital Wasteland chapter under the leadership of Arthur Maxon, which distinguishes between its standard initiates on the path to knighthood its Scribe Initiates, and its Lancer Initiates, which go on to serve in the Brotherhood's recently established Air Corps. This chapter also implements a unique rank for Initiates who enter training under the promotion of a superior officer. This rank is known as Aspirant. When an Aspirant completes their training, they will bypass the standard rank system that follow Initiate in order to be promoted to a fully-fledged Knight. Once an Initiate completes their training, they are promoted to either a senior initiate, denoting that they are done with basic training and have progressed to more advanced training, or in the case of the West Coast chapters, an apprentice, denoting that their training is complete and that they must decide whether to pursue a path to knighthood or join the ranks of the scribes. Once an initiate has completed their training and chosen a path to pursue, they will be promoted to a fully-fledged member of the Brotherhood of Steel and take their place amongst the chain of command. At this lower level, we see the ranks of Journeyman Knight, Journeyman Scribe, and in the case of the Capital Wasteland chapter, Lancer. Journeyman Knights, typically referred to simply as Knight, are the backbone of the Brotherhood's military power and make up the majority of their infantry force in the East Coast chapters. However, in the West Coast chapters, the fighting is reserved solely for Paladins, and Knights remain at base in order to manufacture and repair weapons, armor, and other technological pieces that the Brotherhood deems necessary. When a Knight has gained significant experience under their belt, they'll be promoted to the position of a Senior Knight. The role of a Senior Knight is simply to oversee the younger Journeyman Knights in their day-to-day -day activities, whether it's continued training or ensuring that equipment is repaired properly and on time. At the top of the order is that of the Head Knight. This position acts as the head of operations and is responsible for the entire branch of knights under them. In some chapters, the Head Knight isn't wholly reserved for a knight in the order and can be held in addition by another with a separate rank, such as Head Paladin, for example. With the East Coast operating more as a standing army than a technocratic cult, the role of knight has evolved several iterations in order to increase field efficiency. As previously stated, the role of knight is that of an infantry role, whose primary duties include patrolling, guarding outposts, 
dreaming about promotion to paladin and engaging enemies of the Brotherhood at every turn. When a knight performs well, they'll likely climb the ladder to that of a knight sergeant. This rank having clearly been inspired by the pre-war military rank structure denotes a squad leader, who operates with up to two squads under their command. Knight sergeants may also be found in command of a small base or outpost, such as the case of Knight Sergeant Wilkes, who commands the security detail stationed at Galaxy News Radio and the Capital Wasteland. And should a Knight Sergeant outperform their peers, well, they can look forward to promotion to Knight Captain. The function of this rank is relatively the same as that of the Knight Sergeant, with many seen operating alongside lower Knights in the field. However, it appears this rank also opens up some unique staffing positions that may be inaccessible to those of a lower rank in the Brotherhood. Some of these positions include quartermasters, medical officers, and special operations, such in the case of Lion's Pride from the Capital Wasteland. The last specification amongst the chapter are that of Knight Commanders. Commanders are the highest ranking knights in Maxon's Brotherhood and are often in charge of command posts. When not operating at a post, they can often be seen leading squads of lower ranking knights into battle, including heavily armed and armored vertebrate shock troopers. Alongside knights are the orders of scribes, whose primary responsibilities include recording and documentation of recovered technology, in addition to experimentation with new types of weaponry and advanced technologies that may prove useful to operatives in the field. The branch of scribes are denoted by their specialty and are separated into three orders, the first being the Order of the Sword, whose primary responsibility includes research and development into different weapon and ammo types, Second is the Order of the Shield, which as the name suggests, is responsible for research into defensive measures, such as bunkers and power armor. And lastly, we have the Order of the Quill, who is primarily responsible for the acquisition and documentation of useful knowledge with pre-war books and holotapes acting as a hot commodity. While the three orders all have vastly different areas, they still follow a standard ranking structure, and a typical journeyman scribe can expect to spend most of their time recording the findings of the order's studies, with few rarely going into the field to research found technologies. Another duty of journeyman scribes is to continually study in order to increase their pull of knowledge in regards to repairing or creating a myriad of different technologies. When a scribe has gained years worth of experience and knowledge, they will become a Senior Scribe, garnering high esteem in their order. Senior Scribes are advanced in their knowledge and efficient in their tasks, as well as often chosen to head projects of the utmost importance to the Brotherhood. At this stage, many Senior Scribes will take a journeyman scribe on as their apprentice, teaching and guiding them throughout the years so that they too may reach the level of a Senior Scribe someday. When an opportunity presents itself, a senior scribe may be promoted to the rank of proctor. A proctor is the head of their order and responsible for overseeing and approving any project the scribes of their order are working on. In addition to this, proctors are responsible for assigning said scribes to a project and ensuring the project is completed to the specifications required by the Brotherhood. At the very top of the scribe class is that of the head scribe. This position is responsible for assigning scribes to the various orders, assigning proctors as heads of those orders, assigning scribes to projects, and overseeing the projects that the three orders are conducting. The rank of head scribe is highly prestigious in the Brotherhood of Steel, and is often held by the most competent and experienced scribe, who is shown to have mastered the three orders of the sword, shield, and quill. Due to the height of this position, the head scribe is required to attend any meetings with the High Elder, amongst many others such as the Elder Council, Chapter Elder, Brotherhood Generals, Head Paladin, and Head Knights. With the expansion of the East Coast Brotherhood of Steel came the newly formed Air Corps, encompassing the Pridwin, as well as many vertebrates that were looted from the ruins of Enclave bases in the Capital Wasteland. During this time, the chapter saw fit to equip this new division with their system of ranks, distinguishing them from the rest of the Brotherhood's military forces. The Lancer is the first of these ranks, making up the bulk of the Brotherhood's pilots. While vertebrates can be operated solely by Lancer initiates, it's more common that they act as co-pilots alongside fully-fledged Lancers, who have completed their training in full. The primary responsibility of Lancer is to provide transport and air support to forces operating on the ground. 
While the training of Lancers are heavily focused around piloting, especially in situations where they might find themselves under heavy fire, they are also adequately trained as ground forces and rightfully equipped with state-of-the-art weaponry should they find themselves surviving a downed aircraft. After they have garnered enough flight time and piloting experience, a Lancer will receive a promotion to Lancer Knight. This rank not only signifies a veteran pilot, but also opens the door to more esteemed positions, such as assisting to pilot the Pridwin. Above Lancer Knights are Lancer Sergeants, whose skill and experience has earned them officer status, despite the sergeant moniker often referring to a non-commissioned officer. The responsibilities of a Lancer Sergeant do not seem to differ from that of Lancer Knights, and are likely in use to ensure efficient flow of commands. At the top of the pilot class are Lancer Captains whose primary responsibility is to oversee flight operations and ensure that all vehicles are properly supplied and maintained. Lancer captains are also responsible for the operations of the larger airships, such as in the case of the Pridwin, and any other ships the East Coast Brotherhood may erect in the future. At the heart of the West Coast Brotherhood's infantry, and reserved only for elite soldiers on the East Coast, is the rank of Paladin. In West Coast chapters, paladins are likened to scribes and seen on the same level, merely different in the purpose of their role, acting as protectors instead of researchers. Paladins act mostly as security in scouting forces out west, and are the first members of the faction to be allowed to don the iconic power armor and laser weaponry. After having spent a sufficient amount of time in grade as a paladin, it's possible that a promotion to senior paladin may be on the horizon. This position denotes an experienced paladin, and likely comes with the added responsibility of managing a fire team, leading patrols, and responding to potential threats. Above senior paladins is the Don Juan himself, the head paladin. This position is primarily responsible for training the lesser paladins and overseeing their operations, much like that of an officer. Head paladins are typically next in line to become elder of their chapter as well, with the only notable exception to this being that of Father Elijah, who was the head scribe before his rise to elder of the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel. Back east, the rank and role of Paladin is very similar to the West Coast, with a few additions. In Maxon's Brotherhood, Paladins are veteran soldiers, having first exemplified themselves as knights, and are instantly recognizable from their black power armor, further setting themselves apart from the lesser ranks. When a Paladin distinguishes themselves further, they may be promoted to a Paladin commander, the role of this rank is to act as a unit commander, leading large assault forces of the Brotherhood infantry into battle. However, this is rare, and Paladin commanders spend the majority of their time planning and strategizing with the other commanders. Above Paladin commander is the rank of Star Paladin. Unique to the Eastern chapter, Star Paladins are the best of the best, having been promoted to the position by showcasing undying loyalty, honor, and ferociousness in battle. An additional unique trait of this position is the level of operational freedom they enjoy, often being allowed to conduct operations how they see fit, within reason, of course. Above Star Paladin is a position so scarcely used that only one person has officially held the position in decades. None other than the rank of Sentinel. Specific to the East Coast Division, Sentinels are highly elite members of the Order, answering only to that chapter's elder. At the very top of a Brotherhood chapter, upon a throne of lost technologies, sits the chapter's elder, the highest rank a member of the Order can hope to achieve. Elders are responsible for the entire path their chapter takes, from forging alliances, to providing services, going to war, or hunkering down. The weight of it all sits with them. Elders from the various chapters form the Brotherhood's ruling council, which acts not only to inform the separate chapters of their comings and goings, but also to help ensure that all chapters are following the Way of Steel. But one exists above it all, a king amongst his subjects, a god amongst men. I am speaking, of course, about the High Elder, the one who lords above all the other chapters of the Brotherhood of Steel. The very first High Elder was a man named Roger Maxon, who led the very first families that would form the Brotherhood to the Lost Hills Bunker. Since then, every High Elder was a man in his direct genetic line, acting as an heir to what he created. By the year 2287, the current High Elder of the Brotherhood is unknown, but if rumors are to be believed, 
Elder Arthur Maxson of the Capital Wasteland chapter, is next in line. These have been the ranks of the Brotherhood of Steel as we've come to know them. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe to the channel so you can be part of our wonderful and growing community here. Lastly, if you want to support the channel further, leave me a super chat, become a channel member, or pick up a unique piece of merchandise from the NeoCypher store. You can also share pictures of you and your new merch with me on Instagram. I would love to see them. Thank you again for watching, and until we meet next, Steel be with you.